my friend Kyle and I faked being bouncers. So it's my sophomore year of college. It's a Thursday night doing homework in my dorm. And I get a text text from this kid named Tex who is like one of my big brothers. There's a group of kids at 219 that kind of took me under their wing when I came to college as a little freshman and just kind of like showed me how to properly experience college. Tex is one of those people and he shoots me a text like, hey dude, come over tonight, we're going out. And I'm like, you know, man, maybe if I get my homework done, I'll be there. So I get my homework done and I'm honestly just sitting on the couch like I'm not going to go out. And then he calls me, dude, come on, where you at? I'm like, I just finished my homework. Yeah, yeah, I'll come out. Um, I can get dressed, grab this half full bottle of New Am and take off out the door. So we end up at Texas, which is 219. I end up back at 219. All these stories have 219 in it. That should be a red flag. I get there and I just remember like as soon as I stepped in the door and again, Thursday night and everyone's just aggressively drinking. So we're taking pulls of my new am shots of other stuff. Like we're just clearing out all these half drank liquor bottles. And then it was like, all right, time to go. So it's me, Luke, <clears throat> who's like a six, five, just massive teddy bear of a human being. And this kid named Doran, his girlfriend, Mads and Kyle and Kyle's like, Kyle's like my life mentor. <laughs> And again, Kyle's like the one semi-responsible dude in my eyes from that group. So we go out and we go to this bar called Tiki. And I don't know if they still do it, but on Thursday nights they had these things called Malibu buckets where it's Malibu, some type of mixed punch, and just a bunch of ice. So it's like these huge buckets of just mixed drink. And they're great, you know, so on Thursdays they're cheaper than usual. We're going through like three or four rounds of them. And I don't remember exactly how it took place, but there's no cover charge on Thursday at Tiki. At least there used to not be. I don't know what it is now. But Kyle and I are at the bar getting another round of drinks. And he looks at me and goes, hey, see that? And I look over and it's the little table and chair where they usually have like the money where they check your IDs and stuff. And he's like, we could fake being bouncers. And I'm like, all right, so... We literally take our Malibu buckets, go over to the entrance of the back entrance of Tiki, same place I got my ID snapped. They snapped his fucking <laughs> real ID! And we're sitting there, and next thing you know, people just start, like, paying us. And Kyle would be like, yo, yo, $5 cover charge. And these groups of people are just paying us. Like, didn't even, I don't even think we asked for the IDs half the time. Like, we'd be like, you got an ID? No? Okay, five bucks. Like, and we're making a decent amount of money. Like, we got 40, 50 bucks on the table. And we're dying, right? Like, we're trashed, sipping our Malibu buckets, charging people to get into a bar. We're just going to use that money for more drinks, right? Well, all of a sudden, you hear, what the fuck? And this hand, boom, grabs my shoulder. I'm like, oh, shit. And then Kyle is like, run, time, run. So, like, we just, like, scramble up, pick up this money. I, like, fall over the little table. And we take off out the back entrance of Tiki. And at first... There was a couple bouncers chasing us or employees of the bar. They start chasing us and Kyle's like, we gotta go. And like, we are just like full on sprinting for our lives down this little alleyway in between the BG people know this in between Bright House and another building. It's like a skinny little alleyway, crosses a street into another parking lot by this bar called Uptown. And then you take off onto like the main drag of BG's like downtown. So we sprint out around the corner right by this place called Insomnia Cookies and I remember, like, while we're sprinting through this parking lot, Kyle looks over, he's like, dude, we're moving, Tom. I'm like, yeah, dude, we're flying. So we take off, outrun the person who probably gave up their chase after, like, five feet, but in our heads, we were running for our lives. And we're heading towards Taco Bell. Now, BG Taco Bell is, like, the hub. That is the place. And on our way there, I don't know if it was just because I was sloppy drunk or because I just wanted to keep drinking. I don't, I don't know what my logic was at the time, but I turn and walk, Kyle's going to Taco Bell and I turn and walk straight into this bar called Ziggy's. Now, at some point during this, I had contacted my roommate, Mitch at the time to come pick me up. So I go into Ziggy's for no reason, see these girls that I kind of know from church, take a shot of 151, which was horrible. I turn, 
start throwing up in this trash can right next to the bar at Ziggy's. And then the guys are like, you need to get out of here. I'm like, bleh, bleh, okay, all right. So they throw me out of the bar. And I just round the corner and go straight to Taco Bell. So I'm in line at Taco Bell. And Kyle is like a couple feet up from me. My roommate Mitch and his buddy, another Kyle, are waiting in the car for me to come out of Taco Bell. And <laughs> I don't know, to this day, I don't know why I would say this. But there's this guy in front of me. And... And I'm a Steelers fan, so, you know, big time, no offense to Joe Hayden. But Joe Hayden was on the Browns at the time. And this guy in front of me, I go, hey, bro, you look like Joe Hayden. And at first, he, like, takes it as, like, the biggest compliment. Like, I see it all over his face. He's like, you know, thanks, man. And he goes to, like, dab me up. And I'm like, Joe Hayden's a bitch. And, <laughs> and then he immediately wanted to scrap. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll scrap. So... Kyle sees this happening, so he gets his food, he comes out, he's like, dude, stop, stop, and I'm, like, ready to, like, I'm trying to, like, stand straight so I can scrap with this kid, and then this group of, it's Cam Day, Cam Day saves my life, like, Cam Day probably saved my ass, like, three or four times during my college career, but Cam comes up with a group of people, and, uh, they end up being like, whoa, what's going on, and, like, break up what happened, and, <laughs> And I explained, like, oh, yeah, I said he's a bitch. And the guy's like, yeah, he called me a bitch. And, like, <laughs> and then the fight, you know, we talked. They, my buddies came and talked the guy off off the ledge. And then I proceeded to get in the car with Mitch and Kyle. And it was driven back to the dorm. And I woke up the next day on the floor next to the toilet in off an hour. So, my dorm. So, that is a that is another classic Thursday night story. And Kyle... We were definitely good fake bouncers. I was riding around town thinking to myself, is it gonna get easier? I'll be up in the way of the street and paper can't even breathe no more. What's it to me? What can I see? Taking shots by the lake till I can't even breathe. <laughs> you said Bowling Green State. I've always said Bowling Green State. It sounds better. It's formal. <laughs>